Today we're building a transmission one of a kind with a one of a kind valve body for Mr. John Cope at Cope Racing Transmissions. Today we're gonna get into it. Yeah! we're going to start with is we're going to go right down the list he says set front clutch pack 75 to 85 whenever you do this you got to have yourself an assortment of you know spacers different clips i mean this this comes into play um, on one of these i had to substitute a blue in for a red um, these ones are 63 thousandths these ones are 87 thousandths but it's not going to hurt nothing this is um, your direct clutch so i don't care Anyways, I got 76 thousandths right here, um, and that is literally perfect. So I can't get my finger in there to get it out, but um, yeah, so that's perfect. And then we're gonna move on to the rear clutch, which basically I'm assuming he's calling your direct, your forward clutches. So this is your forward clutch pack, and this is direct. So yeah, we're gonna measure that one next. This one here is right at 26. So we're right in the number, and um, then we're going to set, well, we're going to skip over the front band. We're going to get to that one once we stack it. But we're going to do the rear band here in just a second, and I'll show you how to do that one. So this is what he's talking about on the rear band. This is going to have a uh, low band apply, so you got to have some movement in it. So I basically snugged this up to about 75 inch pounds or so, and then backed it off two and a half inches, and then I locked, uh, two and a half turns, sorry, and then uh, locked it off and, and put on the nut. So... I also did get a billet piece down in here because this does have low band apply and we're going to put some pressure to this thing and whatnot. Now, on the accumulator, I put a rod in these normally, but on this one here, because we need a special rod, it can't be longer. I don't have the paper here, but he said two. Um, got the paper right here. Uh, 2.9. So mine was like three inches long so what i did is i took mr half inch bolt and then i put it into my chuck lathe actually a drill and then a grinder and i spun it and cut it and i basically turned this into that so this is 200 and i'm uh, sorry 2.9 inches long and then uh, that's going to sit right here inside my accumulator and i put the big end in there i put a little dab of grease on there or just you know little Vaseline and that way when you put it in there it doesn't block off anything and there's your lock it's perfect you can do this you don't need anything special get that now we're going to talk about drums this is the setup I would have liked to run I had this aluminum drum from years past and I would like to run that and then um, I got a transmission from Mr. Wilburn and I had this nice in it so I was going to combine these two and be awesome here's the problem though is that I want to run a lockup with a lockup you got to run this type of shaft. The lockup has got a different diameter here. So this drum will not go inside there. So I got to run this drum, this style drum. Now this drum, as you can see, the lugs are wider. See that? So you got to run a late model style of shell. See? So you can see the difference in the shell. So uh, yeah, so I, this this is the setup I'm going to be running. Uh, I would have liked to run this, but eh, here's what it is. But I'll give Mr. Co uh, Mr. Mr. Wilburn back this. This is his gear set that um, that he got. He built a transmission for someone uh, a while back, and so I'm going to give him back some some of his parts here. I'm also going to give him back his cool little piece that he custom made. Uh, I'll I'll put a video. Of, he has a four or five part series where he built this transmission. And uh, it came with the car that I got. So I'm going to give him that back. Um, I am going to take his rigid band, though. So I owe you one, Mr. Wilburn. So I'm, I'm taking that. Sorry, buddy. Uh, this is mine. I've had this for a while. I'm going to use that. And then I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here. We'll talk about pans here in a minute. So some years ago, I bought this tool right here. Um, it's a Kentmore. I got this at a car swap meet. I got it for five bucks. Um, it was for GM, and it doesn't really help you much because it doesn't really fit 
Mr. Chrysler. Nothing fits the Chrysler, right? So I made a spacer. Mr. Aluminum piece. So now the aluminum piece sits in there, holds that. So then when you put the spacer on there, you can compress it. So as I'm building this, there's a spacer that goes right in here between the output shaft and the input shaft. Normally they have a, a fiber washer like this on the 904s. What's nice is that the A500 and the A99s come with this. It's actually got a, a brass or bronze um, bushing on it with a the steel washer. It's about the same thickness as this. It's about 10,000 sticker, but um, it's nice. So because these things get destroyed, absolutely destroyed. That's good. I've also got another style here. I've I've seen over the years. I've kept. It's kind of a clover leaf style with a big bush or uh, bushing on it like this. So I keep these just in case um, they seem to work inside these of the clover leaf. Um, so yeah, this is much thicker, but um, they do work. So I keep that because you never know. You always keep extra parts. Some other custom tools I made. I made this, these two that basically just bolts that I put once again in my drill lathe with a cutoff wheel and then got the grinder out just to round them off. I made them out of stainless steel and they are basically just screw in to align the pump as you put it in. Super simple, easy, don't need special stuff. You can make it. Now we're just going to put the pump in. Before I put the pump in, I'm going to show you this. This is a block off. So what I do on these is that when you, when you have this pump apart, I take this and you don't even have to drill this out. Eighth inch pipe thread literally goes right in there and you can just put a brass eighth inch um, plug right into it and it goes in perfect. So these aren't torqued down, these are just snug, but I just did an end play on this, and right at 80 thousandths. A little much for me, so I'm going to put this in and uh, see what we get from there. It shows here in the old school book. See, I love these things, because, I don't know, I just like books better than the computer for some reason. I don't know, call me old school. Um, they tell you end play here, uh, 904, should be between sorry uh, 904 transmission 37 to 84 i'm on the very end of that i'd rather be kind of in the middle this right here um, is definitely much thicker we'll measure it we'll take it apart and we'll measure it up and we'll see where we're at forgot to show you here's another tool i made this is a front pump puller basically just took some uh all thread i ran on a long um uh, you know, basically just one that's these long nuts and then nut on top of it, jam it in between the two and then just put a little grease on it, screw it in there. It doesn't have to go in there very far and pulls them out. So that's your front, that's your pump puller. Totally bitching and uh, free. Cause remember I was racing as a broke kid. So I had to learn how to do all this stuff myself. Okay. So this right here measured with a micrometer is 98 thousandths for that one. This piece right here is 131. So we had 80. Take the difference between those two, that gives me 47. So we're gonna check it out. We're gonna stab this in and see what we get. So we got it back together and we're just checking in play. And we got exactly 47 thousandths. Yeah. So I can't complain with that. I'm gonna say that as a win. I'm gonna take these bolts back out. I'm gonna put new washers on them and yucky pucky them up. Just kidding, put a little tack on them and uh, call it good. And then we're gonna torque those down then we're gonna to move to underneath. Mr. Cope is saying that he wants to set a front band at two and a quarter turns. So what I do, get your little tool, put a little mark on it. It doesn't need to be tight, just just, just hand tight like that. So then that's, that's, there's one. It's two. That's a quarter turn right there. And then uh, I'm just gonna lock that sucker down right there. And I'm gonna call that good. Another thing that the valve body king of Chicago, Mr. John Cope, says that you need is, he says, drill a hole here, which is you know, 180 degrees from that, um, 16th of an inch bleed hole. So when I check this, you're going to hear air escaping. So here, it tells me that um, this right here is your front clutch. So front clutch, you're going to hear leak. And then this is your rear, basically your, your um, forward clutch. So then we're going to check this one here. So you're going to hear it. Listen. You can hear it leaking, but this one right here, I'm gonna to barely touch this one. Now this is the this is the, the forward clutches. I can hear them moving, so we're good. Mr. Cope gives you 
these D-ring type O-rings for your accumulator. I forgot to mention this earlier. I showed you how I make my custom rod. And I'm gonna show you how to check it. So I'm gonna put these O-rings on here. So all this was put together for this thing right here. John Cope, awesome dude. He is, can you read that? Built by the Val Body King of Chicago. Right there. It says so right there. So it must be, right? Anyways, uh, way back when, uh, 2016 or something like that, he had just come out with these valve bodies, and I got the very first one, the very first one he ever made of these of these valve bodies that had low band apply, and then so this one is 790. So yeah, so he built this just for me, and uh, yeah, I'm stoked about this thing. So we're gonna put this thing in here. Don't forget to put your parking rod on. You gotta take that from the other one. I also flipped these around because I actually did it reverse what I told John I was going to do because uh, just for room sake, um, I put this as my trans brake and that one as my lockup. I was going to put the two here and the one there, but there's just made more sense that way. So what makes it so special? Well, Mr. Cope came up with um, putting the trans brake on the bottom side. So if you ever have a problem, you don't have to drop the valve body, which is awesome. Because before, if you know like grinder style, they're on this side, and it's a governor valve that's got a solenoid on it. Two, um, this one has got a reverse manual valve body with low band apply, I think I said that, plus a lockup. So it's got a lockup on this. Because we're gonna try to do everything we can to get this old Plan Z pile of slant six um, as fast as we can get it. So we're gonna have trans brake, reverse manual valve body, low band apply with lockup, because this is gonna be a drag and drive car. All right, so there it is. Torqued all 10 bolts to 70 inch pounds. I'm gonna flip this over and put the, the seal in there, but uh, you can see that I had to move that one to there. Uh, that's on there, and these are the two trans brake ones. So um, yeah, they're all out of the way, and I think this is gonna work just bitching. So I've got this cool little kit. You can take them out and install them inside the vehicle. I couldn't find my old one, so I got a new one. Um, so yeah, I got this. Because every vehicle I own except for one, one has this seal. So why not have this? So I put a little little goop on there, just a tiny bit. And when I put them on, I'm gonna try to do this one-handed bandit while I look it through here. I try to twist it on like so, like that. And then uh, obviously I can't hit this, but um, yeah, so that, that's it right there. You sometimes, well, I can't push it in, but uh, just hit that on until it gets flat and uh, we're good to go. Getting close to the end here. We have a cross member that's coming from um, Mopar Al. I'm going to meet him on Saturday somewhere in Tennessee. He's going to be the, the proud owner of a piece of Plan Z. And in exchange, I'm going to get a real piece. So here's what we got. We're gonna check pans. We're gonna let you guys choose on what pan we're gonna get. We have A, which is a stock pan, which you can put on there. We have basically pan B. This is the John Wilburn special, painted red in one of his things that he did. Then we have pan C. Pan C is the TCI pan. Robust aluminum, about the same depth as this. Or we have this one. The, the king of all pans. This is Pan D. I got this from a racer here. Uh, he was given to me and he says, if you can ever use it, use it. So I'm going to let you guys choose. I already kind of know which one you're going to choose because I would choose it too. If you guys choose this one, I got it before I say 100% yes, I got to make sure that the, the transmission mount and all that stuff will work. Otherwise we'll modify. But I would like, I'm, I'm not going to say what I want, but... Pick A, B, C, or D. And we're gonna be putting it on on the Forfer, which is, this is the name of this. If you know, um, basically watch, what is that, Oak Island, you know that. If you don't know the inside joke, watch Tech Talk Live on Wednesday night on this channel and you'll understand the Forfer. But anyways, this is the Forfer transmission. Pick A, B, C, or D. And until next time, peace out. You guys take it sleazy.